And like we've started the past couple of weeks, hello, good to see you. Um, but I want to hear some reflections from this past week. I think I prefaced this week by saying, hey, y'all, it's week three. And there are already some pre-planned disruptions from Mother Nature on the way. Don't be shocked if week three turns out to be a little bit more difficult than the first two weeks of this challenge, okay? So I'd love to hear today, um, one, if that showed up in your life, right? Any difficulties that arose this week, but I specifically would like to hear how you overcame those struggles this week, okay? Challenges from the past week, week three, and how you overcame those challenges this week. Ready, say go. Challenges. I, I'm, good morning, everyone. This is Kanisha. I guess I can say a challenge I had this week was for some reason, I just didn't feel like going to the gym. And I thought the snow was going to save me. <laughs> so, but then we didn't get snow. So I went anyway. And you should feel very proud of yourself because you went anyway. And then what happened? Well, I had a good workout. I was glad I went and I was able to maintain my win so far. So it was good. It was a good choice. But I was looking forward to the snow day. I was really excited. And then something told me to pack my bag before I went to work. And I was like, let me take it with me anyway. And I took it. And then I looked out the window. I'm like, there's no snow. I got to go to the gym. <laughs> mm -hmm. But and I was definitely looking forward to it. Kanisha is sharing all of this. Wanting to skip the gym, not feeling like going, wishing for a snow day. Kanisha has failed to mention her big win from this week. Well, I, I met my first weight loss goal, which was huge for me because I never, I never lose weight. I say I have the most stubborn fat and I have the slowest metabolism. So something about this challenge that's keeping me consistent and really focusing on my protein is must be working because I never lose weight. So I'm I had to weigh myself a couple of times this week because I said I know that scale's lying. That scale cannot be right, but it's it's holding. So I'm like, okay. So let's just keep doing what we're doing. So I'm really trying to focus on protein. And um I yesterday was the first day I hit my protein goal since we started. First time I hit my goal um Not for protein. It's not easy. It really isn't. You would think it'd be the easiest thing, but it really isn't. Um, so I guess I had a good week. I had a great week. That's 11 pounds down from the start of the challenge. Oh, wow. Hey, congratulations. Oh, challenge. Wow. That's amazing. Congratulations. Thank congratulations. You. I really never lose weight. So I'm like in a little bit of a shock. But I did the small things this like since uh -huh. the goal since the challenge started. So I've given up my morning Dunkin' Donuts, which I religiously stopped and got. So I haven't had Dunkin' in 20 days. Um, I got rid of the candy dish in my office. So everybody at work is upset, but I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm choosing me. Uh -huh. And I don't have my afternoon bag of chips from the cafeteria. So that's that wasn't too hard. Big. Yeah, well, <laughs> it feels hard some days to say. I said the candy dish, I was like, it's so much easier for that dish to be empty and I don't have to make a decision about it. So I tried to get rid of the things that I have to decide every day because that's a daunting task, Um, you know, to have to say no to Oreos. Well, if there's no Oreos, I can't have Oreos. I can be mad at 11 o'clock that I can't have Oreos, but there's nothing to have. So, it's, you know, get over yourself. Go have that orange and sit down. Love it. Love it, Kanika. Thank you so much for some uh, inspiration, some motivation this morning. If you are just joining, we're celebrating Kanisha, who wanted a snow day, wanted to skip the gym this week, but also earned an 11-pound drop on the scale since the start of this challenge, which is awesome, and mentioned that 
Um, she has chosen herself and making a few sacrifices that don't really feel like sacrifices in the grand scheme. And that's the point of this, right? The point of this is to make you feel like this isn't hard. Something's wrong. I should be struggling. I should be hungry. I should be frustrated. I should be angry. I should be having cravings. And even if I want some Oreos, like I'm okay. This isn't difficult. And you should be raising an eyebrow at what we're doing, but it should also be working. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. What else is going well this week? Um, and as you're thinking about what's going well, it's Dezetta's birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Thank you so much for spending some time with me uh, with us today. I really do appreciate it. Okay. What's going well? Good morning. Um, this is Dominique. I think hey. for me, um, I mean, I've been snorting since Monday. Like literally can't move. The rules have been horrible. It's been snowing all week. And um so I've been trying to get out and like go and walk. I did go to my apartment um complex gym and I didn't do, even though I didn't do well, I think because I prioritized protein, um, I did see the scale go down this week and I was still in shock as well. Like I just put my weight in, but I was like, oh, this is this is not right because I've literally been in here like having my crackers and I'm sitting in here like making this quote unquote coffee protein shake thing. And I was like, this shit got too much, you know, it tastes too sweet, but it ain't no way. But some way, somehow, by the grace of God, I've been getting close to my protein and I'm I'm still shocked. I was shocked because I didn't do much. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I've been I've been stuck. And when I did go to the stores to try to get stuff, everything was basically gone. I felt like everybody was like, Well, since I'm gonna be snowed and I'ma just eat salads, you know, I'm gonna take all the protein shakes and I'm gonna do something because I could not get anything. But luckily, I did have something left, and I was able to, like, trash through the snow, walk through the snow, lift some weights um, a few days before they just literally shut everything down. So, I, you know, it was, it was good to say that I did do something instead of just, like, sitting around, laying around, not doing anything. And I basically stick to my, um, you know, my schedule. Still got up early as if I was going to work and stayed up and, and, and still meal prep and actually cooked. Um, during that time, so that was a um, that was a big challenge because it, it, it's tough. Like, literally, when you you can't go anywhere because you're literally stuck because the rules in your apartment complex song say like you literally can't go anywhere, and it, and it just you get that urge to just want to go out and do something. But literally, I had to stay in and cook so and and find something, and it actually worked. So I'm proud of myself for that because normally I would just digging my boyfriend's snacks and, you know, find some piece of candy or chip in my backpack that I stole from a student because they wasn't supposed to have in my class, but I didn't do that. So luckily, you know, I'm proud of that. Still got my work out in and, you know, did something this week. I love that. And that's, that's a reflection of the choice that you made, right? being snowed in and, you know, having to make adjustments, you can adjust and do nothing or you can adjust and get creative. And it sounds like that's what you did. It sounds like that's a lot of what folks did this week um, was adjusting and trying to get creative with how you did it. I don't know if y'all saw my stories yesterday. Um, train with a ruck bag, little over the shoulder rucksack thing. It was 60 pounds. It was awful. And it made me wonder like, how, how was I walking around just like carrying this? Like, this is hard. Um, but it I, I loved and appreciated one, the creativity that you all inspired me to kind of find. So I didn't feel like doing anything yesterday. Um, but then I've also appreciated just the reminder of how far we have all come, right? Go find something that weighs an additional 15 pounds. Go find something that weighs 40 or 60 or 80 pounds, right? That's the weight that you're carrying around. So I appreciate the creativity that you all have uh, shown this week. We'll get back to what's working, what's going well. Um, I would love to dive into our presentation for today, starting with, of course, the rewind from where we have been. If you have not watched or were not present for the first two uh, installments or first three, one, two, yeah, the first two installments of 
our conversations, please do go back and watch those. They are recorded so that you have the information, but they're really valuable. You all bring so much value um, to these spaces. One, an encouragement for one another, but then two, in your ideas, right? There's a plethora of information and expertise here. And so please do go back um, if you're struggling with any component of the first two chapters in our toolkit and in what we're working on together. All right, let me share my screen. Here is a quick recap of where we've been. All right, we talked about calories, the currency energy of the body. We talked about what is necessary in terms of calories to lose weight. We talked about your metabolism, total daily energy expenditure, why it's important to be exercising. And then we dove into the food pyramid, okay? We talked about in terms of your food, um, there being a really important need for protein, right? Mm -hmm. Protein serves two purposes. It helps to build and repair your muscle tissue, right? And other tissues in your body. So that means after you're doing your resistance training session, it is super important for you to be replenishing the protein that you're breaking down in your training sessions. When you go in the gym, sure, you're burning calories, you're getting a pump. But what you're actually doing is you're ripping, you're tearing, creating micro tears in your muscles in your ligaments, okay? It is super important for you to have that protein. Meet your protein goal every day in order to build your body back so that you don't feel like you got hit by a train tomorrow, all right? Super duper important. All right. Then we also talked about protein being what helps to keep us full, okay? If you have, for several days, hit your protein target, you might have had a strange experience where you have just not been hungry. Like, coach, I don't know, you have all these extra calories for me to eat, all this extra fat and all these extra carbs, which I could have my daily treat with, but I don't even want my daily treat because I'm so full. I'm satisfied. Okay. That's a wonderful problem to have when we're meeting our protein target. So step one of your nutrition is to ensure that you are hitting your protein target. And in our last conversation, we had some wonderful ideas on how to get that done. Okay. So make sure you go back and you uh, catch that recording if you haven't already. We also talked about the food pyramid and how down here, what we've learned in terms of refined carbohydrates being the base of our nutrition is inherently wrong, right? This stuff is keeping us sick. This stuff is keeping us unwell. And we want to invert our pyramid, even if you are not a red meat or high protein, uh, animal protein connoisseur, right? We still want the majority of what we're consuming to be based in our protein for a myriad of health reasons, right? We talked about our sedentary lifestyles and we talked about making a plan right around your sleep. We talked about a plan around strategy for the week and how important it is. I feel like this week, this past week with the snowstorms and fill in the blank, it became evident. Like this was a real life practice of how important it is for you to have a plan in place, okay? A best day plan and a worst day plan. It is super duper important for you to head into your week with some type of strategy, okay? We talked about that last time. If you missed that conversation, go back, check it out. The last thing I said last time was, please don't overthink this, right? This should feel like a challenge, but it should feel like a challenge that you've never done before in that it's a challenge that you can actually be successful with. These are goalposts. These are ideas. These are strategies that you can actually implement and put into your life. That's why we start these conversations with what's going well, because I want to remind you that, hey, you're doing it. So please don't overthink it. You are in the process of doing these things, okay? You're becoming... So don't overthink this because overthinking is often the thief of action, all right? Where we're headed next. Today, we're talking about science. I'm going to get real nerdy with you all, right? Things that I typically don't post on Instagram because Instagram is for entertainment purposes only, okay? We're getting into the educational component of this stuff. So this is probably a good place to like go really slowly with the conversations that we're going to have today. We're going to go slow. Also, it's probably a good place to take notes on the conversation that we're starting today. Um, talking about science-based strategies around how effectively, right? What is the optimal way to be going about this? How to make fat loss easier, okay? We're going to talk about nutrition timing. Now that we understand what carbs, fats, and proteins are, how do we time those things for the optimal output or the optimal outcome in terms of our fat loss, okay? Muscle protein synthesis, food volume and satiety, right? And stress management and sleep. We'll talk about all that stuff starting this week's First, specifically with exercise and nutrition, okay? We are now bridging the gap between how do I eat and how do I move? Because these two things set the foundation of the rest of your life. Remember, we talked about last time. This is the rest of your life. 
This isn't this eight-week challenge. This isn't the next 21 days. This is the rest of your life. When you sign that dotted line that you want to start this process, you are saying, this is my last time doing this, and I am going to be successful, okay? So now we're bridging the gap between, coach, how do I need to eat? What can I eat? How do I eat it? And how do I pair my exercise with this in my new life? Okay, so we'll cover that today. First things first, let me remind you that we're not on a diet. No one here is dieting, okay? We're focused on the lifestyle components that will get you these outcomes. You lost the weight, you kept it off, you have healthy eating habits in your new life. You exercise daily, daily in your new life. Someone's asked me before, coach, how many days do I need to hit my step target? Eight. Every single day you're hitting your step goal. That's a daily goal. Every day you're getting some type of exercise. You strength train at least three times per week. And you treat your body well. You understand how sleep impacts you. You understand how sugar impacts you, how salt impacts you, how stress impacts you, how your cycle impacts you. These are all things that we've never talked about before. But through this relationship, you're coming to an understanding of, okay, when cycle week comes, like I'm actually off during cycle week. And I have permission to be off during cycle week for these various reasons, okay? And you enjoy this new life, right? This new freedom that you have and getting to move your body and getting to eat well and getting to respect what your body needs and working with yourself, not against yourself, okay? Because the body has this infinite intelligence and wisdom that we don't have. And so we do well to heed the wisdom of our bodies, okay? So what you eat in this new life is the most important. We talked about that before. Your schedule, right? And the way that you approach this stuff, eating well and exercising is a part of your daily life. And under a normal circumstance, you have it all planned out. You know exactly when you're getting it, how you're getting your steps in. You know exactly where you're going to go to get your exercise in, okay? And then your mindset. Because you're practicing a new life, these practices are something that you are beginning to implement through this challenge. This isn't something you start and quit. There's no such thing as quit. Not in Slaying 60, not at Queen, Queen Fit, not with Coach Kyra, never. There's no such thing as quit here, Okay. You are committed because you understand the benefits of mastering these practices will lend you a longer and healthier life. If I get this right, I will live longer and healthier with better quality of life, period. So this is practice for what we want to be true by the end of this year, in the next five years, the next 15 years, the next 40 years, right? These are things we want to be true as life progresses. Okay. So exercise. One of the conversations I had this week was around how exercise is not just about burning body fat, how exercise is not just about calories, how for many of us, and let me stop sharing here, how for many of us, exercise has become a mental health hack. Exercise has become one of the ways that I relieve stress. Exercise has become one of the ways that I like calm my anxiety a little bit. And it's starting to click for some people that I'm getting this itch is what we call it. I'm getting this itch to move my body. And not because of what my watch says I burn in terms of calories today. I could care less about the calories I burned today. But I'm getting this itch to move my body because it helps me show up better in every other place in my life. Exercise is one of the ways that I manage my mental health, okay? And as we look at what's happening in the world, as we experience what's happening in our, in our bodies, I want you to think of exercise with this extra layer, right? Like, yes, we're going to talk about how exercise helps us burn calories and burns fat, right? We'll talk about that in a second. But I want for the umbrella that covers everything that we cover in terms of exercise to be exercises for my well-being, okay? It just helps me to show up and be a better person. And that's the attitude that I want us to have about exercise no matter what. Okay, exercise, sure, it can burn calories, sure, it can burn fat, but exercise just helps me become a better person. And I want us to get in the habit of thinking that way. Okay, I just want to take that moment. Okay, exercising to burn body fat. Losing body fat is a two step process, right? You think, like, okay, cool, I'm just going to be in a calorie deficit and lose weight. It's not the way it works. Exercise is a two step process that's a lot like breaking peanuts out of their shell. Okay, we need to remove the body fat from the cell. And then we need to use the fat as energy, okay? We break it out of the shell, we break the shell, and then we can use the contents as energy, okay? Stored body fat is the stored energy form of food that you ate yesterday, 
last week, two years ago, 15 years ago, is the food that you did not need that day got stored, okay? It's stored in the form of triglycerides and fat cells called adipocytes, okay? Science stuff, right? Adipose tissue. Fat breakdown. It's estimated that each pound of body fat that you hold, so if you think like, okay, I might have a pound here in my arm. Each pound of body fat that you hold is 3,500 total calories worth of energy. And so most of us think like, okay, if I'm eating you know, 1,700 to 2,200 calories a day, that means in order for me to burn what's in my arm, it might take a day and a half, right, of no energy to utilize that stored energy, okay? 3,500 calories in a pound of body fat. But in order to use this stored body fat, we have to release the triglycerides before they can become energy that we can use. And this release is the result of our calorie deficit, okay? We figured out our BMR. We figured out our total daily energy expenditure. We are eating below what our daily needs are. And this gap of a calorie deficit is what releases the adipose tissue to become energy. Clear? All good? Right. Beautiful. So then... After the triglyceride is broken down, right? Triglyceride, there's three, it's like a little three-pronged thing. You break these th three pieces off, okay? They're moved through the bloodstream to your muscle to be burned for energy, okay? It's oxidation. This is why exercise, the utilization of your muscle tissue is so important. During caloric restriction, your body slowly releases energy into muscles to be used in place of the fats and carbs that you would typically be eating, okay? We're not touching the protein goal. So protein remains the same no matter what your goals currently are. But as we create a calorie deficit, we do so by dropping the amount of fats and carbs that you're consuming, okay? During caloric restriction, because we have this gap in what you need versus what you're getting, the body releases this energy into your muscle to be used in place of what you would have eaten in terms of fats and carbs, right? Exercise ensures that the fat that is now in your muscle to be used as energy actually gets used rather than being restored, rather than being stored again, okay? Exercise ensures that the energy from your body fat that has been transported to your muscles to be used actually gets used rather than being pulled from the muscle and being stored again, okay? A calorie deficit and exercise, this combination of the gap in what I need versus what I'm getting, plus exercise, specifically rigorous exercise, ensures that we get both fat breakdown and fat burning, okay? Nutrition, calorie deficit, and exercise. So here's how we're going to use our nutrition to create this fat burning effect, okay? First, we're gonna take a quick detour to talk about carbs. First things first, carbs are not bad. Carbs are the body's preferred energy source. The body loves to run on carbs. Carbs are easily and readily made available by the body. Think of carbs as tapping your credit Card when you go to the store. It's so easy to do so. Or using Apple Pay. These are just tap, right? That's what the body can use quite easily, carbohydrates. But because the body can use these easily, that also means that carbs can be stored easily, okay? Without a good enough reason for your body to use carbohydrates, that reason being rigorous exercise, the carbohydrates that you consume might get stored, okay? Your body might re-wrap the peanut, okay? So then how do we then think about our carbohydrates? Most of us are over consuming carbs. Most of us don't need 200 grams of carbs a day. Okay? Vigorous exercise expenditure is how we use the carbs that are in our bloodstream. But if most people are never doing vigorous exercise, right? Think a level nine out of 10, five or six days per week. If most of us aren't exercising with that level of intensity, there's no need for extra carbohydrates, okay? So think about it like this. LeBron James in season, right, while he's playing, eats 700 grams of carbohydrates a day, 700 grams. This is several bowls of pasta, 
This is rice and Rice Krispie treats. This is cookies and candy and Gatorade and fill in the blank. LeBron has to do that because of the amount of energy that he's expending throughout the day. A pro bodybuilder or a pro athlete, like a boxer, right? Someone who's training regularly, maybe not in season, but still a professional in their sport, might have to eat something like 300 grams of carbohydrates per day while they're preparing for their sport. But for normal people, right, for people who don't have a sport, who aren't professional athletes and whose bodies are not tied to their income, for people like us, about 150 grams or less is sufficient for our daily carbohydrate needs. 150 grams might actually be aggressive for some people, especially if we are not highly, vigorously active. On top of that, the majority of our carbohydrates need to be coming from real food, right? You think not this stuff over here, this like white and brown stuff. We want our carbohydrates to come from color, fruit and vegetables and potatoes and oats and quinoa and brown rice and fill in the blank. We want color and the real food carbohydrates are the things that we need to be consuming, okay? Most of us are over consuming carbs because carbs are tasty, number one, but they're also easily stored. 150 grams or less is sufficient for anyone who's on this call, okay? But that does not make carbs or your daily treat off limits or bad for you. Does not have 10 level needed combo of cardio and strength. Does that not have 10 level needed combo of cardio and strength? Okay. Uh, Stacey, can you, can you come off and... Yeah, sorry. You were talking about in order to um, burn burn you have to have like a nine out of ten intensity in your exercise five six days a week can that come from a strength training session and or a cardio session or is it just cardio so then a nine out of ten cardio session right might be something like sprints and i have not programmed any sprints for it i don't i don't sprint okay no one is sprinting, right? You think red zone cardio, level five, bent over, hunched over, rolled out on the floor, cardio, okay? So nine out of 10 cardio is not something that most people will ever get to doing. However, nine out of 10 resistance in terms of difficulty, right? In terms of load, and we'll get to that in a second, might be something that most, no zombies, no need to sprint, LOL. <laughs> most people will never need to, do that intense uh, cardio or never get the chance to do that intense cardio, right? A nine out of 10 in terms of your resistance is a perfect place to be. We'll talk about that in a second. Based on what you're saying, my carb goal is really high and I've yet to meet it. Usually I get just about half of the goal. Yep. Okay, let me go into a little bit of detail here. Let's, let's put it into practice. Up oh, first, gotta talk about fats. Fats are not bad or off limits. Fats are a backup energy source, right? Where carbs are preferred energy, fats are essential energy and electric for your body vehicle, okay? Fats also regulate all of our hormonal functions. So if you're having issues with cortisol, if you're having issues with progesterone, if you're having issues with thyroid function, we need to come back to your fats and ensure that you're getting the essential amount of fats that your body needs to live today. And that essential level, is 0.3 grams per pound in terms of fats every day, right? So a low-fat diet is probably going to screw up your hormones, okay? We want to make sure that we're getting an adequate amount of fat. 0.3 per pound is about where that lands, okay? But fats are also e easily over-consumed, okay? Very few people are measuring the amount of nuts that they consume. I'll just reach in and just grab a handful of almonds. But if you know anything about almonds, what you think is a handful is probably a handful and a half. And that handful was already 190 calories. Now that you have a handful and a half of almonds, you're still like 250 calories. And you didn't even know. And you're not full. You didn't know. And you're not full. So here comes these little sneaky opportunities, right? Or even olive oil. Maybe I'll have like a vinaigrette that I pour over my salad. And it's healthy, coach. Like this is a vinaigrette. It's not ranch. Regardless of whether it's ranch or vinaigrette. Because of the fat content, right? It is easy to overconsume what you thought was a tablespoon spoon of coconut oil. And I love this example. I'm gonna pick on keto people real quick. I'm not gonna name who you are, but I'm gonna pick on keto people on the stall. You'll take a, and I did this before I'm guilty, right? 
There was this thing with like coconut oil in your coffee when keto was a thing, right? Take a spoonful of coconut oil and put it in your coffee. And I was doing that and I take a spoonful and another one. I'm like, I want extra keto, okay? Until I learned how to read food labels and I look on the back and every tablespoon of coconut oil is 190 calories. And all of a sudden I have added 300 and some odd calories because I'm not even evenly measuring the tablespoon. I'm taking a spoon. 300 something calories to my coffee. And I'm doing keto and have no idea why I'm gaining weight. What in the world is happening? I thought I was on keto. I'm supposed to be eating extra fat, extra cheese, extra butter this, extra bacon this, right? But it's not until I understood what fats were, what carbs were, how to read food labels and how to measure value in terms of caloric density, that I understood that there's something inherently wrong with that, right? Keto won't work if you're not in a calorie deficit, but keto especially is difficult because of this down here. Fats are expensive in terms of caloric density, right? Carbs are four calories per gram. Proteins are also four calories per gram. Alcohol is seven calories per gram. And fats are nine calories per gram of fat, okay? So you can take a square of, I don't know, salmon and a square of uh, sweet potato and a shot of alcohol and a square, a little bite-sized serving of macadamia nut. And the macadamia nut is automatically more expensive. Automatically. But it's supposed to be healthy, right? Yes, but once we understand this caloric value thing, it starts to become clear that we need to be very careful, one, understanding, and two, cautious about where we're getting our nutrients from. We have an essential amount of fat that we need to be getting each and every day. And then the rest of it just needs to be measured, okay? We need to make sure that we're measuring this stuff, uh, how much we're consuming. Did I hear somebody pop off? Hold on, let me see. That was Shay. Shay, is that you? Yeah. Hey. I, I just <clears throat> was thinking about Chipotle and whether to get that extra scoop of uh, guacamole. <laughs> so, I I have a true story around that. Yeah. Um, it complete. I agree. It, it completely messes up your macros. And you thought you were That's eating something. It was good, but it was. You need it long now. Oh, you went mute again. Sorry about that. Here. <clears throat> I was done. There you go. I was just okay. laughing at myself. But <clears throat> this is a tough audience here because y'all didn't laugh with me. So it's all good. I'm laughing. I, I was laughing. <laughs> no, we were on mute. <laughs> so. All right. All right. Well, carry on. The oh, crowd, that's funny. Um, no, yeah. Things like guac will really, really get you tied up. If you're going to Chipotle, all right, you want that guacamole on the side in their little measure cup. Get it on the side. That way you know how much you're actually consuming because you know you get the Chipotle. It just depends on who's on the line that day. It really depends. Sometimes you get one scoop, sometimes you get, you get four. Right? I have to ask them, can you take some of that out, please? That's a lot of rice. Please. Okay. You can double down the protein though. If you can spare any extra protein, I'll take it. Um, anyways, definitely get the, the guac measured, okay? And your oils and your nuts and seeds, you got to be doing the serving size with this stuff because it will easily sneak up on you. Cheese included. Oh my God, I'm not gonna call y'all out. Some of y'all have cheese problem. Oh my, we have I some cheese. I, I have a cheese problem. I am not- I have a cheese that. problem too, child. That's like, I, mm, cheese is me. Oof. My we favorite bite. Which one? Cheese or something else? Cheese and macaroni is my favorite food. So there you go. Oh my gosh. Don't we can't talk about favorite foods, y'all. We're in a calorie deficit right now. I'm hungry. Okay. Um, yeah, some of y'all have a cheese problem. We need to be measuring the cheese. All right. Cheese needs to go on this list of fats. Okay. A cheese has protein. It's not a wonderful source of protein, people. It's a great source of fat. Cheese has protein. Peanut butter also has protein, but it's not a great source of protein. It's a wonderful source of fat, okay? Read your food label. All right, cool. let's keep going. So here's the game that we're playing. We are wanting to release stored body fat or energy that our bodies can use today. Then 
after the release, we need to burn the body fat that has been released and we need to not punish it by not over consuming our carbs and not over consuming our fats. Being aware in both categories. That's the game that we're playing. Release, burn, don't replenish. Okay? That's the game. So then rigorous exercise and nutrition timing is the duo that causes this to work. Fat release and fat burning. Okay? Your training should be hard. I'm sorry. I know. I'm kicking butts. I get it. But it should be difficult. We shouldn't be walking through the park. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, we'll talk about this curve in terms of your nutrient timing, specifically your carbohydrate timing. Erica, you came on, Erica would see, you came on uh, a little bit early to talk about how you need to be fueling your exercise a little bit better. We'll talk about that right, right now, okay? If you are someone who trains in the morning, this is a good slide to kind of screenshot if you want to. If you are someone who is training in the morning, you want to be skewing your carbohydrate intake around your training window, okay? You want to be consuming your your carbohydrates before and after your training and weaning off of the additional energy throughout the rest of the day. Okay, so here's what this looks like. If you wake up 5.30 and you're going to train somewhere around 6, okay? 5.30, wake up, hydrate. 6 a.m., right? You're going to have your pre-workout carbohydrate. Note, this does not say carb and protein. You don't need the protein yet. Carbs. First, if you're an AM trainer, okay, 6.30 workout, 7 a.m. workout, carb first. Now, this can be fruit. You can have applesauce. You can do oatmeal if it's not too heavy. Pre-workout, high carb, okay? After your workout, you're going to have high carb, right? This helps to replenish, right, and restore carbohydrate and protein, also helping muscle recovery, muscle build, okay? These two things together. So after your workout, you'll have high carb and high protein. At lunch, you'll start to introduce your slow digestion carbohydrate, your potato, your rice, fill in the blank. At lunch, this is the top of your day, you're having your last carbohydrate, okay? And then snack and dinner, you don't need any more carbs because you're not expending any more rigorous energy. You don't need them. So then if you're an oatmeal person, if you're a pancake person, I don't know, if you're a cinnamon roll person, once this challenge is over, right? Cheat. Have the things that you love in this morning window, okay? But just get into the habit of skewing off or tapering off your carbohydrates after lunch because for the rest of the day, you are not performing high-intensity exercise that requires carbohydrates to complete, okay? Any questions about this? Yes. I have a question. Yes. All right. Who's first? I think I who did I hear? Is that I think you're off? Go ahead, Sita. Okay, so since since what we talked about yesterday, am I allowed mm -hmm. to do that pre carb work? That pre carb, mm -hmm. that pre work carb. Okay, cool. Thank you. That's the only the only carb you should be having. Okay. My question. Good is, question. Uh, my question is, you didn't label the 6 a.m. and the 7 a.m. Is is that snack and breakfast or breakfast and snack in terms of like the amount of, like, is mm. that a snack at 6 a.m.? Yeah, this breakfast? is pre-workout snack. Yep. Okay. Before, post would be breakfast. Post-workout breakfast is protein and high carb. Pre-workout snack is just high carb. Fruit. Oats, bar, juice. What else? I, I have a question. Okay, I see, uh, I think I saw Michelle and then Maria, and then I think I saw Sonia too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Should I go first? Please, yes. Okay. Um, I have a, a question about dinner. Um, okay. Uh, I we've discussed this before. Like once I'm done eating for the night, I'm good. Very rarely do I snack or anything like that. But what I'm concerned about with um no carbs at dinner, or maybe you could correct me. Um, how like could you give us an example? This will this will be helpful if you could give us an example of a high protein no carb 
dinner that will keep you um, satiated and not have to, you know, like I'm, my concern is if this is what I'm eating, this is it. Am I going to feel hungry at say nine o'clock? Good question. I could answer, but someone else can answer too. <clears throat> I'll take a stab at it. Um, literally what came to mind when you were asking your question was it could be maybe sort of a mental game going on where you're accustomed to eating certain things. And so yes. you're feeling like you didn't eat enough. But in reality, when you plug the numbers, if you're a macro person, like if you're tracking the numbers, mm -hmm. you'll be like, oh, this works. But you still looking around and you're like, I need some this. <laughs> Yeah. If you eat enough protein, depending on what you need at that point in time, you're probably going to be okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So for your last meal, it should be high in protein enough to satisfy you for the rest of the night. Right. And this is why setting the foundation of this protein game is so important because once you trust that if I eat enough protein, I will be okay. It starts to be okay at the end of the day to eat a meal that's high in protein and high in vegetable, and you don't feel or need anything. You're good. Sleep good, stuff, feeling great. So I have okay, a question so for you. High so, protein, high veg. Uh, did you hear me? Yep, yep. <laughs> All right. So, like, I know broccoli has, like, 10 grams of protein and, like, a serving. Mm -hmm. But is broccoli on the carb side too? Yeah, vegetables are, are carbs. But remember, but, all of your yeah. whole food car all of your whole food carbohydrates are what we're trying to fill that 150 grams of carbs with, right? So then vegetables don't quite um count or have the same impact. Uh so vegetables would just be Still, okay. technically off limits, right? Have as, have as much as you want. Yeah. I, I was just going to offer you, if you try like different proteins, like the unconventional proteins, like the almonds, um, peanut butter, like you just kind of stack all those things that are different than what you think, um, Michelle, is yes. normally protein. And you start playing with those things and you're like, oh, this is interesting. And you, you know, you kind of learn. Because let me tell you, you have not cross the burning sands until you are you need 12 grams of protein and you're running around looking like what is this this or this and <laughs> it, you you learn the hard way um but then you won't ever be in that scenario again thanks for your tips so i have one too and it <laughs> so my protein goal has just gone um exponentially higher than i have ever had before and I'm actually kind of excited about it once I can get out of the house and actually go buy some more good stuff but um a couple of nights I actually just added a protein um, drink with my dinner because those things fill me up like crazy and then it also feels like a treat because I don't know remember who suggested that or game I'm getting ready as soon as I can get out of the house go to Costco and buy them out and I only mm -hmm. have so I mean, and that's 30 grams of protein just in that little bottle. And it's only 160 calories. So you're not going to, it's not going to blow you out of the water with your, with your calorie oh. deficit. Oh, great. Can you, can you repeat that again? Orgain? Orgain. And, and so I'm, I'm super lazy. Mm -hmm. So I buy the, the pre-mixed ones, the mm -hmm. chocolate, the chocolate was through the roof and it's plant-based. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Welcome. I've been playing around with some um, <laughs> proteins and I haven't figured out which ones I, I like yet. So I'll try that one. Thank you. And I'm on my way to Costco later on. And they're on sale mm -hmm. right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome. Yep. Have that protein shake. If, if your protein shake is sweet, it can be a little dessert for you. I just bought a um a key lime pie flavored protein shake from First Form, y'all. I'll let you know. Key lime pie is my jam. I'll let you know how it is. I might freeze, whip it up, and freeze it. I eat it cold last thing in the day. It's gonna trick my brain into thinking it's ice cream. Um, please do. Okay. Uh, let's see. We had, I believe, Miss Song, and we had, and I think we had. 
Who else came on? Hey. Hello. Uh, yes, my question is, so uh, for this challenge, you asked us to have a eating window. And so yes. if my eating window is 10 to 7 and I'm working out in the morning, how does that work? Mm -hmm. Good question. What time are you training? Uh, sometimes 5, 6, and then I'm not eating until 11. Are you training fasting? You haven't eaten anything? Nothing. Mm. Okay. We want to definitely train fueled. Okay. Definitely train fueled. So even if it's outside of your fasting window, right? The eating window, which for point of clarity, the eating window is for the cutoff time, right? I want us to be done eating with enough time for your food to digest so that you can get a good night's sleep. That's actually the point of this, right? Eating windows for the cutoff, not for the start. But then if we're eating a carbohydrate before our eating window for the sole purpose of going to burn it in my exercise right now, it kind of cancels itself out, right? This energy that I'm eating right now, but I'm using right now as well, okay? So I want you to have your pre-workout fuel, absolutely. And then so if you want it to post-workout because you'll be in your eating window, if you want it to just have protein post-workout and then have your lunch be the high carb, that's fine too, okay? That's fine too. But always, always, always fuel them before. Okay, so what would that look like? if you? So for breakfast, you're saying like a protein shake. I mean, per workout. Yep. So then if you are up at five, mm -hmm. training 530, right? You wake up five, you have some applesauce, fill okay. in the blank, mm -hmm. right? Or some oatmeal. Okay. Mm -hmm. You train after you have your protein shake and then you go the rest of your window. If your eating window ends at 10, 11, your first meal will be high in carbohydrate and then you'll begin to taper off for the rest of the day. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Right, any other questions about um, this piece? If you're a morninger, definitely a killer Dave's bagel. My goodness. Can you have a ba banana? Yes. Oh. Yeah. If you, if you haven't gotten into killer Dave's, please do. Have to try to saw someone take the protein shake and freeze in an ice cube tree. Then in the AM, put the cubes in cold brew coffee in a blow. Oh. I didn't have a question. Ice cube. Hello, Maria. All right. So my question is like for, I love lentils. Mm -hmm. Lentils are like my favorite, but it's still a carb. So is that not something you could eat? Like when I transition to working out in the, the morning, because it is still like a carb, but a protein. So the lentils in your case would likely be a part of your lunch or dinner. If you're exercising in the morning, the lentils would be a part of your lunch or dinner. Right. The lentils have protein, but they're a better source of carbs, like you mentioned. So I would have them um, as I'm beginning that tapering process. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question about um, Please, yes. moderate carbs? So I'm really interested in learning more about slow digesting food mm -hmm. because that's basically my um, problem. Overall, I, I I definitely have slow digestion. Gotcha. Okay. So fast carbs and slow carbs. I love this. Thank y'all so much for this too. Let me get my um screen shared with you. One moment. <clears throat> okay. When you sign up for coaching, you will receive something like this, this eating guide, okay? Within this eating guide, you'll see um, this page that has where we want our foods to come from, okay? When we look at this carbohydrate page, we can think about this carbs and their fast versus slow digestion as how quickly this impacts my blood sugar, right? How, how fast is this going to enter my bloodstream, number one? Um, and then how high of an insulin spike is, is this going to create, right? How much of an insulin spike is this going to create, right? So the foods that produce the lowest glycemic impact 
are over here in this green area that we want to be eating more of, okay? Beans and lentils, oats, whole grain rices, mm -hmm. potatoes, fresh fruit, sweet potatoes, and whole and sprouted grains. These are carbs, but they are technically slow digesting carbs. One, because their sugar impact is low. And then two, because the speed at which they enter the bloodstream is slower because of the amount of fiber in these foods, right? Fiber, skin, shells, casing, fill in the blank. These high fiber, real whole food carbohydrates. And this is where this just whole conversation around eating real food kind of solves everything. If you eat food that's real, right? The impact that it has on your body is nominal compared to foods that are not real, right? You think about a fruit juice or sugar or soda or candy. This is a near immediately impact on your blood sugar, sugar and a rapid and intense insulin spike, okay? And so we want to uh, stay away from these things over here in the red zone, right? These are the types of carbohydrates that are not slow digesting. These are fast digesting carbohydrates. They are also carbohydrates that are easy to overconsume. This is also where prediabetes lives, right? And the more we make the effort to transition from these types of carbs further over here into this green zone, into slow digesting, low GI impact or low glycemic index impact, right? We have a better chance of stabilizing our blood sugar, which will help in a number of ways, including staving off cravings, balancing your energy throughout the day, and not having that blood sugar impact that foods over here in this red zone would have, okay? Does that answer your question, Michelle? Yes, yeah. thank you. Oh, there's too much else. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I responded. Yeah, you're good. Yes, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. Um, let me check the chat here. What are your thoughts on jasmine rice? All right, so jasmine rice, again, white rice right here in this middle zone Um, in terms of its sugar impact. It's right there in the middle uh, because it's lacking the fiber. White rice just lacks the fiber. It's not bad, but the sugar from the rice enters your bloodstream more quickly right, and causes a higher glycemic response because there's no fiber. Okay, the fiber helps slow the sugar impact on your blood. All right, we will get to that another time. But I hope that I hope that piece was helpful. Okay, PM in my last seven minutes or so. Okay, if you are someone who trains in the afternoon or evening, okay, you want your carbohydrates skewed toward the direction of your training. So then think about it like this. You wake up, you hydrate. Breakfast, high protein, no carb. I don't need carbs for breakfast. I have energy. I just woke up, okay? And if I need additional energy, I can get it from my caffeine source. I don't need carbs when I first wake up. Lunch, midday, you probably also don't need carbohydrates right now. This is vegetables and protein because I'm not exerting a high level of energy at this time, okay? Your afternoon snack, so we're getting ready to train. Your afternoon snack, if you're someone who trains around five, six o'clock, maybe three or four, you'll have a high carb, moderate protein, pre-workout snack, high carb, right? You think of your fruit, your pineapple, your mango, fill in the blank. Maybe you'll have some oatmeal right here, fill in the blank, okay? And then post-workout, this is great because your dinner gets to be high protein and high carb for recovery from your afternoon or evening training, okay? We're just changing the direction of where we emphasize your carbohydrate intake, right? If you train in the morning, your carbs are packed into the morning zone. If you train in the evening, your carbs are packed into the evening zone, right? Keeping in mind that we want to be finished eating with enough time for our foods to digest before it's time to go to bed. Any questions about the PM schedule? I have a, I have a question. <clears throat> but what if sometimes like this week, I've had to do my workouts outside of my window completely. So later in the night. So for example, mm -hmm. I at like six, um, even seven o'clock, but I go to the gym at eight. Go to the gym at eight. What time are you going to bed? Um, still around 11. So literally it would be, it, it would be like right before I, I, I go to sleep. I will, 
I'm not hungry after, so I don't eat anything after, but like, you know, my dinner, like I said, is still around six. Um, but would it still be high carb for dinner? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Good question. So dinner would, yes. If you're eating dinner before you go to the gym, dinner is still high carb, right? And if you're not hungry afterward, because there's some anti-hunger effects of exercise, right? Just exercising kind of stays off your appetite as well. You can have your protein shake before bed because we still want the recovery of having met our protein goal. Right. Okay. okay. And so then are the, is the next one you're going to talk about a midday workout too? Midday. Good question. So the noon people, I love, th this is my schedule, right? I'm a midday type of person. I have all my carbs right here in this window of like 1030 to two. All right. That's my window. All my carbs are right here. In the morning, all protein. In the evening, protein and veggies. All my carbohydrates typically come right here. Unless my training window has shifted. Because that's what I'm training. So midday, right there. Same four to five hour window of time where you're consuming those carbs. And one last question about this too, in terms of the workouts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my workouts vary throughout the week versus if mm -hmm. it's if it's me teaching a class or doing yoga versus me doing the heavy weight training, would something like yoga require me to like for Wednesdays when I'm teaching my class, you know, I told you like, I don't really eat much before things that I want on my stomach. Um, mm -hmm. Is that still a high carb dinner or that, that lunchtime before I work do teach or is it, this is more towards the, the weight training only. Yeah, this is more geared toward resistance training, but you are more than welcome to have a piece of fruit 45 to an hour before if you sense you need it. Um, but because the yoga, unless it's like hot yoga, right? Or like, I don't know, hip hop yoga, I'm not sure. Um, if it's something like that, then we probably want to be well-fueled for it. But a light snack, a light carbohydrate snack, a light piece of fruit could be more than sufficient for that. <laughs> I have a quick question. I don't <clears throat> typically um yes. I don't typically eat a snack before I work out and but I work out before dinner. So would you recommend that I just mm -hmm. have a quick piece of fruit mm -hmm. or something? Okay. Yep. And so this is still 45 minutes to an hour before. And you'll feel the difference. Is there anyone on here who who has made this adjustment? to having a piece of something, a, a small snack or something before their training, and then going to train within the next hour and just feeling the strength, the energy, the enthusiasm that you might have when you get into the gym. Because the purpose of, of going to the gym, let me continue here. The purpose of resistance is to push yourself, right? The resistance is designed to be hard. But if you've had a full day of, of work, dealing with kids and your coworkers have gotten on your nerves and fill in the blank, and you had a whole bunch of stuff on your mind, and you can't focus on pushing your resistance training to be difficult, the carbohydrate help, helps you push yourself. That's the purpose of having it, okay? The carb is energy, an extra little turbo boost to help you get through your training, okay? So then cardio versus resistance, and then I'll stop here um, and we'll continue with this conversation next time. These are all wonderful, wonderful questions. Thank you. Cardio versus strength. Cardio is super important for heart health, for lung capacity. If you've had COVID, you know what it feels like to need your lungs and be struggling to find them, okay? For VO2 max and for overall health, super important. Sometimes cardio can be used for extra calorie burn, but that only works for a little bit of time. That doesn't work forever, right? Which is why we're not relying on cardio as a part of your fat loss strategy. It won't work. The body will adapt. It'll learn what you're doing. And it will start to make other accommodations so that you don't burn calories into oblivion. It'll stop working. Then in terms of fatigue management, we're also doing a whole bunch of high intensity cardio because we're in a calorie deficit and we're already experiencing fatigue, whether you have noticed it or not. Being in a calorie deficit is inherently fatiguing on the body. We don't want to add more fatigue from high intensity cardio. Okay? This is why steps come into play. Steps help us to burn additional calories without the impact of high intensity interval cardio training, okay? Steps, getting 10,000 or 8,000 steps per day is more than enough in terms of the additional burn you can get from cardio activity without impacting our fatigue, okay? Resistance training though is what we need for body recomposition 
and the visual changes that most of us are looking for, right? It also helps to increase our metabolism. It also helps in this afterburn effect. Once you go into the gym and you resistance train, you lift weights, your body needs to heal what you've done. That's called afterburn, okay? And then it helps decrease our fragility. It's icy outside. I'm slipping everywhere, but good grief. If I fall, I have confidence that I can stand back up. That's so important. That's so important. And then your muscles become a storage unit, right? The more muscle density that you have, the more storage unit you have for these extra carbohydrates and fats, which we talked about at the very beginning of this, okay? The more muscle density you have, the more carbs and fats you can get away with eating, okay? Which is what we want to come back to anyway. I want to enjoy my life, right? I'm trying to go to, I'm going to Vegas in a couple of weeks. It's time to eat. So the muscle density ensures that Instead of these extra foods that I'm eating becoming stored body fat again, they get placed into my muscle and used through my training, okay? All right, let me stop right here. Uh, Michelle W., I know we have a call coming up here in a couple of minutes. Is it okay if I just hang out maybe for an additional five with folks who have questions and then uh, Michelle, you and I can can just stay on here in just a moment? Not a problem. Okay, perfect. Um, thank you. We ran over. I'm sorry. Uh, but if you have additional questions, I'll hang out for like another five minutes or so. We'll pick up with the rest of this conversation next time, but this will be recorded. I'll upload it for you so you can re-listen, kind of download this again over the weekend. Okay. I hope this was helpful for you. Get into the science of this stuff. Um, if you need anything from me, you know where to find. Thank you. Thanks, coach. Yes, yeah, you're welcome. welcome. Of Very course, of course. Weekend, everybody. Happy, happy birthday. Day, everyone. Happy birthday. Yes, and happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I do have a question real quick. Hey. Based on my comment about my carb intake. Um, okay. So, you know, I've been hyper-focused on the fact that I've been over on my, my fats lately just because I'm the type of foods I'm eating. Yeah. Um, as I'm thinking about prepping for going into February, if I focus on the protein and trying to get the protein goal, is that the priority versus the carbs? I feel like, like I said, like I'm get, I'm trying to get close to protein goal, but I'm really only getting a hundred, maybe a hundred and twenty carbs when in my thing says two fifty. And I already don't eat eat me carbs like that. You know, I told you this this bread thing <laughs> is new for me. But like, mm -hmm. you know, able to plan it right or right without obsessing over it because I can get really obsessed. Yeah. I'm trying not to do that. Um, but I'm like, I look at the numbers and I'm like this these numbers are really high. And I understand about the protein. I get that. So I'm like, let me see what I can do. But what should I do as far as the carbs? I miss it. I'm sorry. Um, in terms of priority, protein is always the priority. Always, always, always the priority. I don't care if you never hit your fat target. I don't care if you never hit your carb target. The main goal should be how do I fill in to ensure that I get the rest of this protein, right? Because for your activity level and for our goal, you are under consuming the protein, right? So our main focus is where can I find additional lean sources of protein that I can tap into on the go, right? That are easily consumed in the midst of my busy schedule. Um, the carbohydrates are there for your for what for where we are in our journey. They're there, right? But we don't have to worry in the slightest about trying to reach a carb target. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, and I think okay I'll do that. You know, like I said, we've. So that makes sense for the, the carbs. I appreciate that. Now these fats, you mm -hmm. know, especially because I eat so much seafood, you know, salmon at the minimum is going to hit out half my fat right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, what, it, what can I do And this? Maybe someone else, yeah, somebody else on the call has been experiencing this, but like, if you're eating pro good protein, but it has high fats, how do we then conversate for that? Laura's open for Fika. Well, I'll I just think say. I think my question, I guess, listening to the this, I I think my carbs are more an issue. So I was used to eating heavier carbs. So as I'm focusing more on protein, 
I to try to focus on getting these protein in, it seems like everything else goes to the wayside. So I don't have as many carbs, I think, by default because I'm looking for so many protein rich foods. So are you hitting your protein goal? I am. Well, so my protein is 180. And based on what we talked about last week, you know, we had that range between I think it was like 130 to 180. And so I I usually wind up around like 150, you know, maybe sometimes like 140, but not quite the 180, but I'm getting there closer towards, I'm trying to get as close as possible. I know, but close as possible and hitting protein goals are two different things. I'm getting close as possible, but yesterday was the first day in all of the challenge that I actually hit my protein goal. So I think if, like, do you eat salmon every day? Is is like, I guess I would, I'm trying to figure out where the all the fat's coming from. Is it added fat? Is it the sauteing something in something? Like, no. can you make a healthier choice there? No, it's literally just the type of protein I'm eating. So if I'm the more me... So maybe you need to pick a leaner protein to try to eat. Like, maybe you need to eat chicken or turkey instead of seafood. I am, I'm pescatarian, so seafood is what I eat. Okay. Yeah, okay. and then for, for Sine, um we have we have a system where we are on like a meal delivery service and oh, okay. the meal the meal delivery service often sends the seafood right or the high the contents of the meal delivery are high in fat as well um i think if if we can through the meal delivery try to look for um and we talked about this before too right looking for those leaner sources if they have them available we can definitely do that but i think the Big picture here is I need to be within my calorie target and I need to hit my protein goal and everything else will answer itself. We kind of talked about this last week, right? Where um, if I am hitting my or within my protein target and hit my protein target within my calories, the carbs and fats can do whatever they need to do based on my lifestyle, right? Based on what I prefer. I can go over on my fats if I'm under on my carbohydrates as long as I'm within my calories, right? So if we look at your uh, daily kind of list that it has where it goes uh, calories, protein, carbs, fats, you'll see I'm under my calories or I've hit my calories, I've hit my protein, and fat can be way over here as long as carbs are over here, right? And mm -hmm. it, one, it hasn't proven to be a problem yet, no. right? like met my goal <laughs> but exactly so, but I just exactly. You know, like, I'm obsessing over this and I just want to like put this to head like okay so I, I understand now focus on the protein the rest like so what I'm doing is good got it what you're doing is good it's working this is not something that needs to be over obsessed about if you have an opportunity to look for leaner sources of protein definitely Go for that. Oh, yeah. Factor might have some shrimp meals, but they like to fill in with the meal delivery we're using with factor. They like to fill in with sauces and all kind of stuff. They like add a whole bunch of fat to the meal. Like, I don't get it. They must be keto people. Nonetheless. Um, <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. And I appreciate you, Tanisha, too. You the the gam gamut of seafood. So shrimp, salmon, cod, tilapia, all of it. Mm -hmm. Factor, they literally salmon and shrimp. And I'm just like, y'all. Yeah. And the salmon is like super high, and I'm, you know, of course, mm -hmm. I took, I've canceled them out. So after I get out this this um this cycle, I won't be reordering them. But you know, it's just like what I've been getting has been a lot of like high fats. Yeah, I have, I have not been meeting any car, um, carb goals. Yeah, but... and that's okay. That's okay. But when Sine for right now, this is working. When we get to a place where we are. Again, high in your training volume. Because remember, the last time we were together, like you were doing a whole bunch of training. I think you were training for like a couple of races, right? Once we get to that place, you will need the additional carbs. So then that might become a conversation a little bit later is like, how do I rebalance the fats and the carbs once we get back to, if we get back to that place, right? Oh, yeah. That's six months. Perfect. Yeah. I'll, I'll be here. Thank you. So... Um, I gained almost a pound and okay. you said we should talk about it. <laughs> yes, we talked about 
red pill versus blue pill. I've had the red pill versus blue pill conversation with a couple of you all. Um, red pill being okay, the thing isn't working. Do I force it to work by doing less? Or, okay, the thing isn't working. Do I take a moment to make it work by eating more? All right. So, Faye, which path? Um, well, I, I, I guess I should try to eat more. Mm -hmm. Okay. I agree. This week, let's bring in... Um, Yep. Let's bring in 300 calories this week. Each day. Uh, 300 calories this week, each day from additional fat. Okay. Now okay. fat has a place. Fat has a job. The job of this additional fat is to increase my calories. Okay. So now yeah. I want you to find 300 calories worth of added fat, right? This is easily two tablespoons of peanut butter. This is just a couple of tablespoons of oil on whatever, you know, salad or meal that I'm having, right? This is just a couple of handfuls of almonds. It won't be hard to do, okay? But we mm -hmm. want to find 300 additional calories to add back in. As we do this next week, this is what should happen. Next week, nothing should happen. Okay. Either you're back to what happened last week or you get exactly the same way in from today. Next week, nothing should happen. And when nothing happens next week, we will increase your calories by 300 again. Okay. Okay. Blue okay. pill. Okay. Challenging our bodies to do what it needs to do by eating more. 300 calories of fat added starting today. Get it from nuts and seeds, peanut butter. Have fun. It's going to be enjoyable. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I have a very quick question. Um, Please. With me on my anti-stress plan here, what kind of uh, movement do would you envision me trying to get over the weekend until we talk again? My cycle started too. You can do nothing but walk. Okay. You can do some light stretching. You can take a swim if you want, right? Sit in the sauna if you want, but think for this week, like more restorative, less impact, less intensity, more restorative type of movement, especially if you give, give your body maybe two days of cycle angst. Okay. And then as cycle weans off, you'll start to feel your strength again. And okay. that's when you can get back to your training. Okay. Okay. So I did good skipping the two hour aerobic class I was invited to. Uh, Two hours. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. My goodness. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Okay. You are so well. All right, y'all. What else? So, Coach, you were talking about um, the workout. If you work out in the morning and the carbs, I, it got me to thinking about that device, uh, Lumen. And whether you have any experience with it or an opinion. I have a lumen. <laughs> You've been holding out. I put it in my closet. Oh, you don't use it's it? Stored, it's stored away. I don't even I don't even know if it's charged anymore. Oh my. I was always curious if that worked. Um, because I kind of feel like I wish I could push a button on my body and, and it tells me exactly what I need to do for the day. And then I don't have to think about it. Um, and so whenever I come across that again, I wondered if if this, the science seems sound as much as you can uh, without heavy medical equipment um, and forget the marketing side of it where they're pushing their stuff. But if, if it could be a useful tool especially around the carbs. Wow. Save for money. <laughs> Good question. And if you all come across stuff like that, send it to me. I probably, I've tried it already. Good question. Say again, I, I didn't have anything else. Okay. Anything else 
from the team. Had a friend who loved it and stopped using it, yeah. Denessa says she's ready to start her red pill journey. Is that a yeah? <laughs> I am. I am. Because I'm, I'm tired of three weeks with absolutely no movement on the scale, which I don't have a weight goal, but that's just disheartening mm -hmm. and it's wrong. Mm -hmm. So we're going to fix that. Yeah. Red pill. Go harder. <clears throat> red pill is tough, but it works. It's it's uh, the unsustainable piece of this journey, but when done under supervision and on the right plan, it works. Red pill works. And we might have to have a conversation one day where we need to choose red pill versus blue pill. Um, but you have to be trusted with red pill. Right? I gotta be able to trust you to do what you what you say you're gonna do on your end to take red pill. Okay. All right, cool. Thank you all so much for um, for some great questions, great commentary today. I certainly do appreciate it. Good call as usual. I will uh, post the recording, make sure everybody has this, but I am just so grateful for this community and, and the folks who are here. So thank you all for your contributions and uh, for being wonderful. So here's to the start of our fourth week of this consistency challenge. And you can look at your schedule. Look at your calendar. And you can measure your own consistency over the past 19 days. How have I been doing? Okay. Um, we want to get to a place where this is on autopilot. And I think we are slowly but surely getting there. So thank y'all again. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful Saturday. Thank you. You too. Thank you. All right. Have see you, Tanya. Day, everybody. All right. Does that a happy birthday? Thank you. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. All right, so I'm hanging out with Michelle right now. Yes. And then Shay, I'll see you. And oh, Shay's gone. All right, perfect. Michelle, let me stop recording real quick. Okay.